Canada's ambassador to China has been making critical remarks about the superpower and how it handled the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the Globe and Mail, Dominic Barton reportedly said in a private meeting that China is alienating foreign countries and damaging its global, quote, soft power. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was asked about what Mr. Barton said earlier today. Have a listen to his response. I think it's clear that there are many questions for countries around the origins uh, and behavior in early days on uh, the COVID-19 situation, particularly questions for China that we've called on uh, uh, to need to, to be asked in the coming, uh, coming months so we can get answers. At the same time, we're seeing a global pandemic that requires a global coordinated response and how countries are behaving uh, now towards each other, supporting each other, moving forward in a difficult time is being known noticed by everyone. And I think uh, it's uh, totally normal that we be asking questions about how different countries are behaving, including China. So how might China respond to these remarks? And does the ambassador have a point? We're going to get to those questions. But first, let's take a look at some fresh data about how Canadians feel about China. Shachi Curl is the executive director at the Angus Reid Institute. She joins us from Vancouver. Hey, Shachi, great to see you. Nice to see you, Vashi. Good to be with you. So what does your latest poll reveal about how Canadians are feeling about China right now? Um, they're taking a pretty dim view of the country. So at this stage, you have only 14 percent of Canadians who say that they have a favorable view of China and compare that to a lot of other countries who may be significant trading partners of ours, who may be um, significant sources of, of other cultural or, or longstanding ties. Uh, China's really right down at the bottom of that list. There's only one other country that Canadians have a dimmer view towards, and that's Saudi Arabia. And how does that compare to attitudes towards China in the past? Let's just say that where we are today in May 2020, Vashi, really represents a nadir in terms of Canadian views towards China. And I want to be really clear here, we're not talking about views towards Chinese people or people of Chinese descent, but actually of the Chinese regime, Beijing. Um, that number was as high as 58% back in 2005. It was at almost 50% favorability just a couple of years ago, a handful of years ago. Today, it's sunk, and it's been on a downward trajectory for a while. So some of this is definitely driven by China's perceived actions, alleged actions around communicating with the rest of the world as a result of uh, the COVID pandemic and, and maybe not saying or alleged to be not having, uh, not saying everything that they knew at the time and when they knew it. But remember, we've been struggling in terms of the relationship with China for a while. That goes back to the detention of the two Michaels, the ongoing problems around Huawei, and, and, the, and the existential trade-off question that Canadians have had to grapple with, which is when it comes to our relationship with China, what do we need to put first? Do we need to put that economic relationship first because it, it does represent a huge economic powerhouse, or do we need to put human rights first? And so in all of that, we're really seeing China sink in terms of Canadians' goodwill or good view of that country. And what's interesting is so much of what you just outlined preceded, obviously, the period we're in right now and the pandemic, all the issues, for example, uh, the tug of war between the economy and the Michael Spaver and Michael Kovrig detained over in China. Now there are a whole host of new questions for China and around China's behavior, especially at the outset of this outbreak. How has that affected or, or how have, what did you find about how Canadians feel about that? There's no doubt that it has affected or it has been a driver of views towards China. So we put a bunch of agree and disagree statements in the survey to Canadians. Do you agree with this statement? Do you not agree with this statement? How do you feel about it? One of the, the statements was, could you know, China can be trusted and has been transparent and honest in terms of its dealings and its communication around the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. 85% of Canadians disagree with that statement. They absolutely think that China has had something to hide on this front and on this file. It has not told everything that it knows. It has not been entirely transparent. And what's really key about this, Vashi, is it cuts across the Canadian political spectrum. So we tend to see left of center and center uh, voters tending to be a little bit more um, 
a little softer towards the Chinese regime, a little more willing to give it the benefit of the doubt, whereas right of center voters tend to take a much harder line. In this case, you see whether people voted NDP, Bloc, Liberal, or Conservative in the last election, they're all fairly aligned and united on this viewpoint and on their sinking views of China. That's so interesting, and I wonder what the implications are for political parties. We were just talking with the power panel earlier, actually, about almost how, I mean, it's small, but you heard a, a, ch a tonal change from the prime minister today in identifying uh, the fact that there will be questions specifically for China at the end of all this. And then, of course, those those comments that were leaked to the Globe and Mail and that private conversation from Dominic Barton. Any thoughts, Shachi, on the implications for political parties based on the data that you've seen? You know, it's a tough thing because generally politicians don't always like to tie themselves to real politic or general popular opinion. How many times have we heard politicians say, well, polls are polls, opinions, opinion. We're here to, to create the policy that runs best. But in this case, Canadians are being pretty unequivocal in terms of where they want their Canadian leaders and policymakers to take the line in terms of China policy. At the same time, uh, if you're in the diplomatic, if you're Dominic Barton, if you are someone who Dominic Barton is on the phone to and consulting with in background, trying to get our citizens home, um, a hard line may or may not be particularly helpful. I don't think it's particularly helpful. The Chinese government, the Chinese regime may look at this and say, well, there's there's really, if Canadians feel this way, where's, where's the advantage for us to soften up? Others, however, would say, well, China needs to hear a harder line from Canada. In this case, I would say again, Canadians are being pretty clear about what they want and expect. They don't want Huawei playing a role in the build out of 5G networks in this country. They want Canadian leaders to take a, a hard stance in terms of putting uh, human rights first over the trading and the economic relationship. And they don't trust and they don't particularly like the Chinese regime right now. And I think that does give all leaders a fair, a fairly clear message in terms of what the expectation is among grassroots rank and file Canadians, of course, where that intersects with you know, diplomacy, where that intersects with soft power, uh, it gets a little messier after that, as we both know, and as you're going to be talking uh, to about with your next guest. Yeah, I was going to say, lots of conversations to be had. Thanks so much, Shachi. Really appreciate your time this evening. Thanks, Vashi.